The President bases his support for renewed capital punishment on a big stick theory of justice that is both simplistic and, I'm afraid, irrational. His insistence upon a return to the death penalty, which will doubtless be framed so as to evade or try to evade the thrust of the recent Supreme Court opinion, is a maneuver buttressed by no evidence, whatever, that could or should persuade our legislators. For a long time, the trend has been against capital punishment. And during all of the 1960s, the trend in the United States and worldwide was to abolish capital punishment. Six states abolished capital punishment in the 1960s, and the President now wants to reverse that trend. It is not a deterrent. Capital punishment has been proven not to be a deterrent to murder, to crime. Uh, actually, in effect, it could work in an opposite way. If you want to get a lot of policemen killed, just have mandatory death penalties and start the, the murderous cycle of the death penalty all over again. The, yes, perhaps the Supreme Court decision wasn't quite that clear, but I think it was clear enough that it is unconstitutional as cruel as and unusual punishment. I can't think of anything that is more cruel or more unusual than the government taking someone out and killing them. He is the chairman of the task force on civil liberties of the Democratic Study Group, and I'm the vice chairman of that group. We appear here today, and we have supporting our bill at least 23 of our colleagues. We appear, appear here today to, uh, on the occasion of introducing a bill which will abolish the death penalty under all federal laws. We obviously have timed this because the President is transmitting to Congress, probably today, a message on law enforcement that recommends that Congress should reinstate the death penalty as a means of combating serious crime. Last June, the Supreme Court held that the infliction of capital punishment is unconstitutional under the cruel and unusual punishment clause of the Eighth Amendment. Many people, including myself, read the Court's decision as prohibiting the death penalty under all circumstances. Others, apparently, President Nixon included, interpret the decision as leaving a certain narrow zone of situations in which capital punishment may be constitutionally inflicted. Distinguished law enforcement agencies in the country came out against capital punishment. In 1963, the National Council on Crime and Delinquency urged the abolition of capital punishment. And in 1966, the American Correctional Association went on record as against capital punishment. The President's reference to soft-headed judges and social theorists and a permissive philosophy is merely another appeal to the law and order jurisprudence. In fact, the President's philosophy, I'm afraid, is based on nothing more than fear. It appeals to the worst and the most irrational instincts of his fellow citizens. The overwhelming weight of opinion, not supported not only by the social theorists, but also by eminent jurists and dedicated students of justice, supports the view that capital punishment does not deter and that it is inhumane and ineffective. Even the President's National Commission on Reform of Federal Criminal Laws recommended in 1971 that capital punishment be abolished. That was the commission uh, of which the chairman was Governor Brown of California. 
Capital punishment is an excessive and irrevocable punishment which wholly fails to serve society. It is my hope that the 93rd Congress will ensure the abolition of capital punishment once and for all by the passage of the bill which I am filing today. I'd like to have Congressman Edwards uh, speak to the question. Well, I would like to commend, commend my colleague from Massachusetts, uh, Bob Drinan, on exercising and offering to us his leadership in this very important area. Uh, as Father Drinan would be more detrimental to our society than to start this horrible cycle again of government killing, as though we don't have enough brutality in our society already, with bombs, with war, with a rising crime rate that has gone up 30 percent since this particular administration came into office uh, more than four years ago. This administration always wants to have uh, its successes on the cheap. Uh, instead of going and trying to get at the roots of crime that have to do with discrimination, with poverty, with job uh, discrimination, with unemployment, it wants to do it by law, by mandatory sentences, by uh, renewal of the death penalty. Well, uh, this bill of uh, Congressman Drynans will be assigned to the House Judiciary Committee. I hope that it gets assigned to Subcommittee 4, of which I am chairman. If so, it will receive prompt. No. I think that I had that particular section in mind when I said that the President, uh, uh, the President's philosophy is based on nothing more than fear. It appeals to the worst and the most irrational instincts of his fellow citizens. He practically discards in that sentence there any of the uh, overwhelming evidence that crime is caused in large part by poor background, by dropouts, by drug-ridden neighborhoods, by all of the scars that bring people uh, into a life of crime. Well, if, uh, if he wants to say that, he can say that. But uh, all I'm concerned with is the 550 or more uh, people now in death row and all of the uh, 102 policemen who were killed last year. Uh, they are, this is not going to terminate by reestablishing, within the meaning of the Supreme Court opinion, the availability of capital punishment. It's a debate that will take us nowhere. It will not help law enforcement. And as Congressman Adams has said, it may well uh, harm law enforcement. Well, uh, certainly we're going to make uh, great progress. We already are in aerial hijacking with the new regulations that have gone into effect. And, and especially you gentlemen in the media who travel a lot know that uh, it's an entirely different story. Uh, insofar as uh, being searched uh, with sophisticated instruments and everything else. But uh, it is really just a wild dream to think that if you propose a mandatory death penalty that uh, these, uh, not religious people, but fanatical people who, who hijack airplanes are going to care uh, little about whether or not the death penalty might result. Uh, an awful lot of them expect to be killed anyway. I'd uh, like to add that the President could do infinitely more for law enforcement 